I was christened Teresa Elizabeth Evelyn Salmon and I was born in Bromley Hospital on the 5th of August 1955. I was a naturally industrious child. I always liked to be doing something. From the age of about eight or nine, I certainly used to paint when I was on holiday. I wasn't very keen on using my imagination, but I was always fascinated by, I liked to observe things and I liked to do very detailed um, drawings of objects. I do like the situation when somebody says to me, that's your subject, you, you've got to do something with that. The work I did um, during the building of the Channel Tunnel and then on the big uh, suspension bridge that they were building for the new airport out in Hong Kong. Now both those two jobs, totally different personalities. Part of the thing that drives me is, is hoping that each different job, each different subject is obviously going to stretch me and make me do things in a way that I haven't done them before. In the sort of mid 80s I thought I could go to Russia and so I worked there for a couple of months and it was the biggest adventure of my life really. I had never traveled completely alone to a country which I knew nothing about. I didn't speak the language and so of course I had to use my eyes. When I was traveling a lot I found that the, 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 the sheer sort of adventure that I was having um, kept to me that that was my inspiration if you like that kept my ideas flowing it meant I always had things I wanted to do I was busy all the time it was very active which is exciting but really when you get down to the real nuts and bolts of how you make an image work what it is that really conveys a message I think that's a much more thoughtful a much slower kind of process To be honest, when I was at art school, I, I really didn't use colour much at all. But that, of course, then means you focus on other things. And I was always very interested in the nature of the marks I was making. Um, what sort of lines, the texture, the tone, all those things, which, of course, are all terribly important. You make thousands of decisions when you're painting. It's a gamble. You invest a huge amount of time in a piece of work and you can obliterate it with two you know, two or three wipes of a rag. And I'm glad actually that I came to colour so late because it's a huge thing for me now and I'm, I, I still feel like it's a, a new discovery for me even at my grand old age. Though I, I paint, that's what I do, but I love, I love forms, I love objects and, and, and the fact that I can collect forms and objects. They have a mystery, probably because it's not something I do in my own work. I like the idea of things that have had another life that I don't know about and they're sort of temporarily coming into my care, if you like. What came to be called the Metal Forest was actually a, an abandoned orchard that had been lying lost and forgotten for the whole of my life. I found myself it compelled to bring other metal objects, rusty metal objects, into this little bit of woodland. In my mind, it felt to me like all sorts of threads were coming together. And, and I think it may affect my work in the future in ways that at the moment I can't even guess at. People can look, but they don't see. My job is I have to look and I then have to see something. And my job is trying to, to trap, but is trying to capture some element of what I see and get it onto, you know, paper, canvas, whatever. Very hard, but you need it to be hard and you want it to be hard because that's what makes it real. And that's when I feel this is, this is what I do. It's the struggle that I go through to try and make that one particular image work and just be the very best that it can be.